Hey guys and girls, bored now back with you on this video. I return to Stranger Things, the Polywog. So full spoilers from the start of this review. This is the best episode of the season so far. It it had been a, a solid, enjoyable season up to this point, but it feels like by the end of this episode, we really are cooking with the plots and you get a better sense of what this season is going to be in the direction they're taking. So it's 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 good stuff pretty much throughout this episode. And also Dustin, I will say he's the MP, MP3. <laughs> that's, that's a funny slip. He's the MVP of the episode. He, he's obviously a very likeable, entertaining character anyway in Stranger Things but there's some episodes where he takes a little bit of a backseat and he's a bit more of a supporting player but he definitely takes the focus this time around so the polywog of the title is the creature which randomly he found in the dustbin at the end of the last episode or it's it's not actually the exact creature but it's the description he gives at one point where he describes it as being similar to like a tadpole and this episode and like Dustin's discovery and the interaction with this new creature it's it it's good in the way it builds like the, the Stranger Things lore and universe and sort of expands on it by me has certain like combinations of different like animals you might come across but it's it's a pretty good practical effect again where on the one hand it's quite cute at times in a certain way but it's also you know has that bit of yeah you better watch out sort of feel to it as well where you can't maybe quite trust it but Dustin obviously takes to it he hides it from his mother as he comes in he's like he's got it in in the Ghostbusters trap it was like an AV club meeting later in the episode and he gets the gang together which includes Max at this point I, I guess because Dustin has a bit of a thing for her but Max is now included in the AV club and I enjoy all the stuff with them I enjoy just how casual and unimpressed Max is with everything like Dustin sort of like invites her during class and he comes in late disturbing the class which is all very entertaining and when he like gives Max the second signal, the AV club meeting, she, she just gives him a thumbs up, but in a very sort of sarcastic, deadpan sort of way, so, so that's all good stuff, but some great scenes with Dustin and this thing in the episode, and it's good because it gives him a bit more of a character as well, like adds to his character, and because he obviously becomes drawn to this thing as if it's sort of a pet and it maybe does cloud his judgment a bit later on when they find out that this thing could be like dangerous to them and it makes him a bit more protective of it when they obviously it does sort of mutate and it sort of goes on the run if you like later on in the episode and they have to try and find it so you get the various members looking around the school it's some nice direction actually in in that back half of the episode it's does a good job of like keeping track of all the various things but it's Dustin who is obviously like no you can't kill this thing um but I do like the AV club stuff and the various reactions to it the show does well that it sort of uses like the science in quite a accessible sort of way but which sounds, you know, it's kind of sounds logical within Stranger Things. But then this might be something that has come from the Upside Down world. They sort of, it's similar to something Will has come across in like his vision. So that again adds to what's happening with Will because they figure out that maybe Will it's not unlike a vision or a hallucination but then he can actually see into the upside down world and I, I like that actually I like that as like an explanation because it, it does maybe give you this sense than will just in the upside down world through his experiences so I think it's almost like a metaphor for he's n he's never truly left the upside down world which is how he's felt 
so far this season where he hasn't quite felt his old self again. He hasn't quite felt like one of the gang again. So it, it it's some good development, some good like mythology with this new thing. And as I said, it, it all gets exciting with them various members chasing it around. It's definitely Dustin's episode I think because he <laughs> there's also like a funny scene with him in the library where he's like he's obviously getting some books out to like look into like the science behind this thing and he does that old like sort of TV type thing where he tricks the librarian like he swears and then points behind her and then runs off with the book because there's a limit of five books apparently that you can get out at a time which sounds about right I would say probably from the school library and he's got five but it turns out he's already got another five already out so he's over his limit with those five but he gets into a thing with her and he has this funny other line about I need a paddle (laughs) which is really funny and he's like these books are my paddles and he ends up running off and then and I think as he's running off and she shouts out he's like I need my paddle again so really good stuff with Dustin but I do like how it builds his character up his like attachment he has with with this thing Will and this discovery because another thing which happens is we actually see a bond between him and Bob for the first time like Bob like offers to take him to school give him a lift and, and he has this really dorky but also funny line about you know fancy a lift in the bobmobile of course which is really funny it's it's just this sort of thing like a guy like that might say like you know a new man enjoys his life who's trying to fit in with with her kids but doesn't know how to do it so he just says like the most sort of dorky things but this this is a good episode for Bob where you actually see some of his charm and some of his like connectability and why he he may well be a good partner for Joyce. It's almost like he's a good foil for her because they have quite a nice scene like when they're having dinner on like the bench and he, he, she, he just talks about her. Well, that's what I like about you because he, he tells her about how when he was looking at the footage on his camera which um, Will and Jonathan took out on Halloween night then he saw some kids on their bullying and Joyce is like oh what was it such and such I'll kill them sort of thing and Bob's commenting on how I really like you because you, you're so you're so in there you know you don't take any crap I, I'm like the total opposite I was always the kid who was bullied at school and it's a nice speech because he he ends it by saying but I guess in the end things worked out for me because I've got you and I've got you know Will and Jonathan it's a really sincere and touching speech actually so I do really like that scene but the other thing with Bob in this episode is he actually builds like a link to Will because he describes to Will at one point in the car, the Bob Mabirical, how he's like, I was just like you as a kid, you know, I was bullied, I was an outsider, that sort of thing. And they actually bring that back later on in the episode because when they're all looking for like the, um, well, I'll say Dart, I'll call it Dart because (laughs) Jonathan, not Jonathan, Dustin gives it the name Dartanen because he's got like a free mustard bars that he feeds him. He ends it at one point but then he's, I think because of the the significance of the thing, he's kind of then drawn back into like the the upside down or, or some version of it and that's kind of where Will ends the episode but he he draws inspiration from Bob where he 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 fights back against it and and again with this being a coming of age show I think the whole deal is basically just saying go away I'm not afraid of you you can't hurt me you you're not real so I was telling him later on in the episode how he faced his demons it's a nice moment and and it does make Bob a more significant sort of character rather than just being like a 
a light comic relief style character. It gives him a bit more of a connection to Will and a bit more of a role in this one. Um, so I'll switch over to Elle because obviously you get more stuff with her and Hopper in this episode. You get more flashbacks, Cabin and Hopper shows her around and I, I do like actually him putting on the record and doing his little dance and Elle just like, what the hell, what's going on? Like a tripwire which is like nearby to the cabin and, and she, he sets up rules and Elle wants to go and see Mike. Tense scene really and Millie Bobby Brown is very tense in it, it or intense, she's really good in, in it. And it brings back a phrase which is like, friends don't lie. Because Hopper's whole thing in the scene is, you can you can see Mike eventually, but only when it's safe. At the moment, it's too dangerous. And apparently, he promised this a long time ago. And she just goes through like all this, you know, you said this back on day one. We're now on day like, whatever the number was, like 31? And it's like, friends don't lie. And she keeps repeating that and gets more and more tense. And obviously Hopper's a sincere guy. We've come to, like, trust him and stuff. But he obviously feels it's still too dangerous. But it's it's a good scene. And some of the stuff with the flashbacks we see later and pays off, then he has been setting these ground rules, these kind of safety-type things with Al back to the school and this is where it intersects with them looking for the thing around the school and all the like the intercut and it's she's in the hallway like wandering around and I, I do like the direction like I said of these scenes um, but at one point she comes across it's when Mike is talking to Max in the gym and when she's like confronting him about hey I you know, why don't you want me in your club? Sort of like the jealousy type thing because she sees them together. This is her powers it max off. But, and it's a good payoff. Mike just immediately thinks, oh my god, is that L? Is L still around? Like, he just instinctively has that thought, even if he doesn't believe it strongly. And he starts looking around, and at that point, Eleven has, like, disappeared. It's a good tease, because when they do meet up at some point once again, that's going to be a a big moment. The Jonathan-Steve stuff, as as it continues to be, Steve reverts a bit back to form in this episode. Like, it's not his finest moment now. He's obviously upset with Nancy about what she said when she was drunk at the party. And once again, he he does have a point. He does have a right to be upset and to ask her, you know, what's going on. In sort of the wrong way, steps over over the line is then he gets all, like, stroppy with her about Jonathan. Like, she starts saying, well, why don't you ask your other boyfriend, Jonathan? The party, Steve... He he actually asked Jonathan to take her home. But he gets she and he can't be, oh, why, why don't you ask your other boyfriend? Like that, because you, you did ask <laughs> Jonathan to take her home. So you can't really have it both ways. And also I think it's just a bit of a crude, cheap shot. It's because, apart from like the odd scene last season, it's not like... Nancy has given Steve much of a reason to be jealous. Either stick with Nancy and, you know, be the good boyfriend and and don't act jealous. Or, if you think it's time to call it quits, then then break up with her. But one or the other. But but don't make these, you know, sarcastic, crude comments, Steve. And really good. He's really fair, actually, to both. Um, he's fair to Steve because he does say, well, he was just concerned about you, Nancy. And he's also fair to her. He's, he's kind of like, J- give yourself a break. You know, we all say messed up things when we're, like, wasted. Nathan's like, the, the guys who did this are no longer around. They're dead. And Nancy's like, well, well, what if they're still around? And she sort of has this idea. She mentions, hey, doesn't Bob work at Radio Shack? <laughs> 
And I'm not quite sure what the idea is yet. All I know is that later on they go back to Nancy's. And they obviously set something up because she's like, do you fancy cutting class? And she calls Bob's mum and says, you know, I really need to talk to you. Can you meet me tomorrow in the park? And there's something important I need to tell you about Bob. But officials are listening in like they've got the phones tapped. So that's obviously going to be important to what Nancy is, has sort of planned. It's the best episode of the season so far in my opinion let me know your thoughts in the comments below please like and subscribe as always share me out on social media and i'll be back with more stranger things soon thanks for listening goodbye